David here with Figboot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today will be a bit of a different format. Um, I have something rather special. I don't have just one pen to show you, I have ten. And these are ten very nice pens. The pens are from Tasia and are part of two different limited edition collections. There is the Miyabi Kaga and the Kagawajima. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of these artistically unique creations, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about them. I'm going to show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Tasia for providing the pens you will see today on loan for review. Like I said, today will be a bit of a different format since I have so many pens to go over and we will get things started over here at camera two. Okay, let's start by taking a look at the Miyabi Kaga collection. Uh, the pens arrive in these really nice softwood boxes. I just love these boxes. And inside we have a few things. Uh, there is some information on the line itself. There is some warranty information here. There are a couple of cartridges, uh, and then nestled here in this little velvet, we have a really nice kimono pen sleeve. This is what the pen sleeve looks like. Uh, it's really nice. It's uh, a lot thicker than uh, and a little more luxurious than some other ones I have in my collection. And inside we have a pen. This is the Tasia Miyabi Kaga, and this particular model is called the Summer Shimmer. Uh, back in the 17th century, there was a period of time when the majority of Japan was controlled by what was known as the Kaga Domain. Uh, it was during this time when there were uh, a number of important craftsmanship techniques created as well. Uh, to honor the artwork and creativity of this time, Tasia has created the Miyabi Kaga Collection. Um, each pen is made by hand in their Arushi Studios in Wajima, Japan, uh, where they enhance traditional inlay techniques with precious metals and Arushi lacquer. Um, the pens are made from an ebonite base and are close to size to the uh, Sailor King of pen. Uh, Tashia and Sailor have a close manufacturing relationship and share a number of parts and design elements. So let's take a look, closer look at this one particular model, and then I'll share some of the other models in this series as well. Um, as I mentioned, this one here is called the Summer Shimmer. Um, I really like the Arushi treatment on the exterior of this pen. It kind of reminds me of the bark on a tree. Um, there is a muted you know, kind of brownish yellow base coat of lacquer, uh, and then they're topped by these lines, which are individually painted here on the barrel. Um, the top of the cap is rounded, and it has some golden shimmer. Um, I think uh, this aspect here is why it's called the Summer Shimmer. Um, that's mirrored down here at the end of the barrel again. Um, also at the end of the barrel here is the signature of the artist who created this pen, as well as the limited edition number. As you can see, this one here is number 29 out of 100. Uh, each of the pens in this series is going to be limited to 100 units. Um, while I typically prefer silver color trim on my pens, I feel the gold clip matches well with the colorway of this particular pen. Silver would have been uh, too much of a contrast for this particular model. Um, the cap twists off in just under two rotations, and underneath we have a number 6 18 karat gold nib. Um, I believe these are available in a wide variety of nib sizes. Uh, I think it's extra fine, fine, uh, medium fine, medium, broad, uh, zoom, as well as music. Uh, but the available options might vary depending on your retailer of choice. And then here is a look at the plastic feed, maybe a closer look at the nib there. Uh, Tassia's nibs are made by Sailor, and Sailor, in my opinion, makes some fantastic nibs. Uh, you'll see in the writing sample later, but this medium nib is no ex exception. Um, with the overall size of this particular pen, I wish this pen had the king of pen nib size. Uh, the nib lo just looks slightly small in comparison to the overall size of the pen. Um, the section is just very slightly concave before angling up slightly to the threads and the remainder of the barrel. 
Um, the black treatment you see here is erased off of the surface of the pen, so it creates an interesting tactile feeling. The additional feature of this raised element really helps, actually helps you maintain a solid grip on this medium-sized section. Um, the pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. Um, the cap, while it does slip on the end here, it really doesn't stay, which is fine. A pen with treatment like this in general should not be posted. Posting over time could damage some of the artistic elements, which would not be a good thing. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. Since this pen does utilize some Sailor parts, it requires proprietary Sailor cartridge uh, and a Sailor converter is provided. Um, even though this barrel is a solid piece of ebonite with a metal here in the section, eye dropping this pen would not be recommended. Okay, let's take a closer look at some of the other pens in this collection. Okay, we had this one here, which is the Summer Shimmer. Uh, and then we have this one here, which is called the Winter Eclipse. Um, I really like the treatment on this pen as well. It really reminds me a bit of ice. It might be tough to see here, but this treatment is uh, significantly raised on the cap and barrel. It really helps you get a good grip on the pen when capping and uncapping. Um, the section has a kind of lesser extreme version of this exterior treatment. Um, this particular pen has a music nib. Um, I'll show you how that writes during the writing sample, but I think this one here has a nice kind of cool overall look to it as well. Next up, we have the Spring Willow. The Spring Willow has some nice darker and more vibrant greens, which are nice. Um, I like this pebbling effect here in the uh, midsection here. Some of those pebbles are actually filled with some Raiden, which is an interesting technique. Kind of reminds me of uh, bumps on frogs as well. And then I like the fact that that pebbling technique has been transitioned over here to the uh, section as well. And it actually helps you maintain a decent grip on this pen. Get that capped. And finally, we have the Autumn Monsoon. Uh, this model features a stormy turquoise Arushi lacquer base with darker blue details and gray accents. Uh, this particular model has a silver clip, which I feel matches well with some of the other silvery gray accents here. Uh, the patterning is uh, extended here onto the section, uh, and I just like the overall look of this pen. It just has a, an interesting patterning to it uh, and a decent overall look to it. These are fairly large pens. In regard to a few size comparisons, uh, this is what it looks like with a Sailor King of Pen in Ebonite. Uh, they are just slightly larger than that pen. Uh, here it is with a Pelican M1000. And here it is with a Mont Blanc 149. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, this is what it looks like with that 149. And here it is with the Pelican M1000. And then finally, here it is with, no, actually, this is the Sailor King of Pen, excuse me. Uh, and then this is the 149. Okay, now I have a different model to show you as well, which is called the Kagawajima. Uh, now, they actually arrived in this really nice large pen sleeve. Or, and so we'll open this up and roll these out. And you can see inside the pens are very well protected and that's a sneak peek of what they look like. I have six of these models to share. A couple have similar treatments to the Miyabi Kaga line, like the first one here, which is again called the Summer Shimmer. Um, this line also drew inspiration from the Kaga domain, but has a different design. Uh, this model is thinner. Um, the ends are flat. And then the pen is faceted. There's 12 facets encircling both the cap and barrel. On these models, the signature as well as limited edition number is on painted on the back of the pen, back of the barrel. Um, each of these models are limited to 50 units each. Now, this pen has a slightly smaller nib, almost close to like a number five nib, which I feel is a little bit more appropriate based on the thinner design of this model. 
Um, again, it is a cartridge converter pen, which utilizes proprietary Sailor cartridges and converters. Now, this is what it looks like once I get this capped uh, in comparison with the Miyabi Kanga model with the same name. You can see how the treatments are similar and the nib on the, maybe I can actually show the nib. Let's get back to where you can show the differences between the nib. You can see how the nib on the Miyabi Kaga is larger, uh, as well as the overall size comparison. Um, you can see that the barrels themselves are very similar in length, um, but the uh, sections are considerably different. You can see the Miyabi Kaga is significantly thicker as well. Uh, the clips are different as well. Uh, with Let me actually get the cap back on. You can see here that the clips, uh, this uh, clip here is more of the traditional Tashia clip that has more of a pinched design. And then this one here is a little bit different, a little bit more uh, uh, traditional in regard to Sailor. Okay, now let me show you some of the other models. Uh, this is the Winter Blizzard. Uh, the technique used on this pen is very similar to that on the Summer Shimmer, but with a base of silvery gray. Um, then next up we have the White Birch, which I really think resembles the bark on a tree. These lines are a little bit more raised than what's on the Summer Shimmer. You can really see how they're raised there. Uh, and the lines aren't transitioned over here to the barrel as well, but it has kind of a matte feeling to it on the exterior with that Arushi lacquer, uh, and it's just really nice. I think this one looks uh, uh, really sharp as well. Then here we have what's called the Hakume, which adds a bit of Raiden Flake accents. Um, I really think that uh, this is kind of a neat, it's kind of subtle addition to this, um, you know, as opposed to like a flashy in your face look to it. Um, the top of the cap starts off dark blue and then transitions into a darker green. And then at the end of the barrel here, we have more of an orangish red. Uh, and then the uh, section on this one is green as well. But I think that provides a, a really interesting uh, combination of colors and looks. Then we have the Hakadu, uh, which looks a bit like the Winter Eclipse, but the treatment isn't as prominent. Uh, it's still very nice with the gray and then the raised black and darker gray treatment. Uh, and inside that, the section does have that same coloring on there. Uh, I think that's a really sharp looking model as well. Now, finally, we have the most unique pen, at least in comparison to the other ones in this series, and that is the Autumn Sunset. Now, this one's interesting. It's still made from ebonite and has the darker red and black Arushi uh, section here in the treatment in the middle of the pen. But the ends of the cap, there is more of kind of a matte finish to it, kind of a matte treatment. Uh, and then it's translated to the end of the barrel as well. It's just more of a matte look and built up texture Arushi work as opposed to kind of the smoother Arushi work in the middle. Um, you know, it's kind of like those gloves you might own where the fingers are dipped in rubber to provide a more of a grip. Now, I know that's simplifying things, but that's just kind of what this uh, pen reminded me of a little bit. Uh, except for obviously Arushi lacquer is not applied by dipping the pen into liquid. But this is what the Kaja Wajima lineup looks like. In regard to a couple of size comparisons, this is what it looks like with a Leonardo Momento Zero Grande. Let's see if we can get them all to fit on here. And then here it is with a Visconti Homo Sapiens. And then, you know what, we have to remove one of these. Here it is with a Pilot Custom Arushi, which you can see is slightly larger. Okay, let's do a writing sample with a couple of different nibs on these pens. First up, we have the Summer Shimmer. So what we have here is the Tasia Miyabi Kaga. And this one here is the Summer Shimmer.
and this is a hard medium nib and the ink that I'm using is an ink that I've really fallen in love with that I really enjoy which is Tasia Saba Midori This is what the ink looks like. It's a really cool ink that just really looks different coming out of just about every different kind of pen. Um, it's a green with a nice kind of bluish red shimmer to it. Um, it just has a lot of personality to it. This is what it looks like in comparison to Pelican Edelstein Olive, which is a little bit more darker. And then Robert Oster River of Fire, which is a little bit more on the green side. This is what the bottle looks like. Um, I mentioned this in the last time I showed this ink, but it's kind of, I, when I first opened this up, I thought that was a mistake because I knew it was a green ink, but as you can see in here, that looks very blue. Uh, and the ink looks very blue when it goes on the page and then kind of changes into something else. And so I think it's kind of cool when ink transitions like that as it dries. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, Sailor nibs are outstanding. Uh, I have no complaints with Sailor nibs. They're some of my favorite. Um, it has, uh, you know, it's just smooth enough, uh, but then there's just a hint of feedback to it as well. The ink flow on it performs very nicely in regard to some reverse writing. It's a little sharp, but gets the job done. And then regard to some fast writing. There's no issues at all. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of different nibs. This one here is the a Winter Eclipse, and on the Winter Eclipse is Sailor's Music Nib, which is a little more unique because music nibs on other pens might have uh, two tine slits, and this one just has one, as you can see. Um, if you'd like to see a really nice overview on music nibs, I do have one on my channel. It's one I did in conjunction with Mike Madison from Ink Dependence, uh, where we both reviewed four pens with music nibs and uh, chose our favorites. And spoiler alert, we didn't have the same favorites. So this is what the music nib looks like. So you can see that it lays down a significantly higher amount of uh, ink. And with this pen, you're going to get very thick strokes going down, but then you're going to get significantly thinner strokes. And, and those are more like on the medium to broad side, going from side to side. So as you're writing, there's going to be some variation. Uh, the ink flow on this one, you, as you can see, is very generous. Uh, reverse writing, it can be done on this particular nib. And just some quick writing. It's very smooth. If I can actually write my own initials. And very pleasant. And uh, I enjoy Sailor's Music Nibs a great deal. And then finally we have the Hakumi. And this particular one has a uh, hard fine nib. So let's see what the hard fine looks like in comparison. Compared to the music nib, it's going to look minuscule. I 
you know, I am not a huge fan of fine and extra fine nibs. I just don't particularly care for some of the, the scratchiness and the sharpness to it. Um, but I don't find that with this particular nib. You get a little bit of flexibility out of here. Um, there is a bit more feedback on this one than I'd than uh, some of the other two nibs. But uh, I'd still say it's very pleasant. I would buy this one uh, and use this fine nib uh, all day long. It's fantastic. Uh, in regard to the ink flow... It's a little bit less, but being a fine nib, that's to be expected. And in regard to reverse writing, it's actually not overly sharp, but does lay down an extra, extra fine line. And then in regard to some fast writing, the feed has no issue in keeping up. So here we are with the Miyabi Kaga as well as the Kagawajima lineup from Tasia. Uh, I think that makes for a rather attractive lineup. Uh, maybe in the notes below, let me know which of these are your favorites in each group. Um, I think of the uh, Miyabi Kaga, I think that uh, the Summer Shimmer is probably my favorite. I've been using this one as a daily driver for uh, uh, a couple of weeks and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, and then in regard to the Kagawajima, um, you know, it's a hard choice. Um, I kind of like the uh, Winter. Is it Winter Blizzard? Winter Blizzard? I think that's the name of it. Yes, Winter Blizzard. Uh, and uh, I think I like that one of that group. But let me know what you'd like. In regard to retail price, uh, these pens are available at a number of different retailers. Uh, for the Miyabi Kaga line, these top four pens, uh, they do retail for $1,276. Uh, and then for the Kagawajima line, for the other line, uh, I have seen them retail in a, a variety of prices, uh, anywhere from $1,595 down to $1,000. So you might want to shop around or take a look at a, a retailer of your choice in order to uh, get a better price on those particular models. But uh, the pricing can vary from retailer to retailer. But overall, I feel that these is, both lines are extremely high quality pens uh, with very interesting techniques. Uh, and unique features. Uh, and then on top of that, especially with the Sailor nibs and features, they perform outstanding as well. Uh, they're very worthy of the price and worthy to be called luxury pens. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.